Welcome to an introduction to accounting brought to you by Parkbench Tutors. In this podcast we are going to look at the ideas behind revenue and expenditure and how they are interpreted for a business studies course. So we're going to begin by looking at the terms capital income and revenue income. Obviously we're going to try and distinguish between what we mean by capital income and what we mean by revenue income. Capital then, that is the money that the owners or investors use to start the business. So who puts the money in to start the business in the first place? Well the answer to that is that it depends on what type of business it is. There are more than one type obviously. If it's a sole trader, then it is the owner who puts the money into the business or gets the money to put into the business. If it's a partnership, it'll be partners who do this. And if it's a limited company, then it's the shareholders. So we'll consider first of all then the capital to start up a partnership. It comes from the partners, from their own savings, or by borrowing from family and friends or by taking out bank loans. As with sole traders it can be hard to raise capital and that's due to the fact that whether it's a sole trader or a partnership then there is unlimited liability. The capital for a company that is slightly different Many investors put money into a company. Some companies may have only a few investors. Others can have hundreds and even thousands. What the investors do is to buy shares in the company. Now the shares are often traded on what we call the stock exchange, but the price there is different to the price of the share itself. In order to issue shares, a company has to inform the registrar of companies and the registrar can agree or disagree with the valuation of a company. This basically stops a company from raising money by issuing shares when there's no realistic possibility that there's any value to the shares. The advantage obviously is if you invest in a company you have limited liability. So the most you can lose is your original investment. In fact, you may be able to sell the shares onto someone else at a higher price. The capital for a sole trader has to come from the owner of the business. And it can be by using your own savings. Or, if you're lucky enough, you may be able to borrow from family and friends. Or, if you're even luckier, you might persuade a bank to give you a loan. It is, of course, hard to raise capital. As we said with partnerships, this is due to unlimited liability. You can lose everything. Okay then, so what do we mean by capital income? Capital income is the money that we use to buy assets. So we raise money to buy assets. Those assets are used to run the business. So what can the assets be? Let's have a look at this. We can have buildings and land. We can have plant and equipment. We can have motor vehicles. We can have office equipment. All of these can be considered as assets and they are used to run the business and you may well have noticed that most of these are expected to last for a considerable period of time. We'll see why that's important later. Okay, so where do we get our capital income from? Owners or partners? The issue and selling of shares if we're a company? Taking out of a loan? Mortgaging a property can often yield additional capital. Right. The capital income then is used to buy the assets. 
We should, by the way, note, if you take out a loan for a business just to pay off expenses, that's not capital income. In fact, you might be lucky to find a bank who will lend you the money for that purpose. A revenue income, then. This is money earned by the business carrying out operating activity. It can come from the manufacture and sale of goods, or it can come from the reselling of goods originally bought for resale, or it can come from the extraction and sale of raw materials or it can come from the provision of services all of these then represent revenue income income that's been earned by the business carrying out its operating activities it can also come of course occasionally from rental of property or equipment Now let's look at ex capital expenditure and revenue income. Capital expenditure. If we have capital income, then it's used to buy assets for the business. Therefore, capital expenditure must be the purchase of those assets. So capital expenditure for fixed assets refers to expenditure on buildings and land, plant and equipment, office equipment and motor vehicles and those are all called tangible assets we can see them we can touch them right buildings and land plant and equipment office equipment and motor vehicles those are our tangible assets we can also have capital expenditure for intangible assets these include trademarks patents and goodwill so, why does a business want to try and buy these? Well, let's just consider the patent on a drug. If you hold the patent for a drug, then you can license other companies to make the drug and get a lot of money back from it. So it then will raise something worth buying. In other words, it's going to yield income. Revenue expenditure. This is the expense of running the business on a day-to-day -day basis and it includes use of electricity and gas for heating and lightning the use of petrol gas or diesel to run vehicles paying staff wages or salaries even such items obviously as using the telephone all of those are types of revenue expenditure now how do we decide whether it is capital expenditure or revenue expenditure? Let's consider Liz who runs an estate agency and records the fixed assets of her business in a register. During the last month she's purchased a new car to visit properties and she paid £16,500 for this car. It's a bit much for that Fiat. She also bought an office desk for £700. She might need a new employee for the desk however. She bought a printer for £45, a stapler for £13, and a pencil sharpener for £2. So, how does she decide what to record as an asset? Right? She bought a car, a desk, a printer, a stapler, and a pencil sharpener. There are two questions which are important here. First of all, will the item be used by the business over a long period of time? And is the cost high enough to record? Now, Liz decides that the pencil sharpener really isn't likely to last that much time, so she's not going to bother with that. And what about her printer? Well, what she decides in the end is that unless it costs over £100, she isn't going to record it as an asset. If the cost is less than £100, then she's going to treat the item as an expense. Now, each business will decide where to draw the line for this purpose. And this is related to something called the materiality concept, which again you will meet later in your st business studies. So we've covered then, in this short podcast, the idea of capital income and revenue income, and the idea of capital expenditure, and revenue expenditure. This ends our short podcast.
brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening.